Thank you, Mr. Lazari. Saxton come in and, and introduce uh, Patrick uh, 
to the board. Mr. Sachs. All right, it's my pleasure to uh, introduce our new basketball, head basketball boys basketball coach, Pat Birch. A little bit about Pat. Uh, Pat and I crossed paths probably, I want to say, he was hired in 2008, but we probably crossed paths about 2006, maybe, about a year or two before that. He had interviewed for a position. We thought we had a potential soul studies position. Uh, we interviewed Pat, ended up that person didn't leave, so we didn't have a position. But we were so impressed by Pat that uh, we kept his his folder at the top of the top of the pile, and I knew if we ever had a soul studies position, it would be a very sh uh, short search uh, because we could just tell Pat was a class act to become a, a top-notch soul studies teacher. About two years later, that position did come available, and again, I mean, it was a short search. We brought Pat in. We were glad he was still on the market, um, and he's been teaching up in high school since 2008. Uh, as far as in, in the area of soul studies, um, he's coached uh, prior at, at Hudson. Uh, I believe he, the gentleman he coached for was his former high school coach, Brent, Coach Brink, uh, over at Springfield, and then uh, when Coach Brink went to Hudson, uh, Pat coached with him. Uh, but he's been helping us out, uh, not only in the classroom since 2008, but also uh, with our uh, basketball program. Um, a couple things about Pat. He's passionate. He loves Borman. He connects with kids. Uh, he's a class act. And I remember what I said, we interviewed him back in 2006, we weren't thinking about hiring a basketball coach. We liked Pat because who he was, and we could tell he was a stand-up, uh, classy individual who would be a good role model for a kid, and we could tell he was going to be an outstanding teacher. Um, once he got hired, and we saw Pat in action, and saw him coaching, and I knew that one day he would be at one of these board meetings being announced as head basketball coach. It's funny how some doors open and some doors close. Uh, a couple years ago we had an opening, Pat interviewed, wasn't the time for him. He didn't get bitter. He didn't walk away. He didn't go looking anywhere else. He went back to work and waited for his time and now the time. And uh, I think Mr. Lazare, you said, you know, Pat Birch is a household name, but I think maybe in a couple of years you're going to find out that Pat Birch is because the Mahoney Valley and the Federal League and the state of Ohio are going to know his name because I, I got a good feeling about Pat Birch. He is not a patch. This isn't just somebody we found because we're in crisis and we had to get a basketball coach in. He's been waiting, and we've been very fortunate, and just happened those doors open at the right time, and it's the right time for Pat Birch. Uh, he's going to do a great job, and he's going to be a big part of our successor at Fordman High School. Well, Pat wants to say a few words. Thank you, Mr. Saxon. Very kind words. I um, just want to say I'm honored and humbled at the opportunity I have before me. Um, I understand it's a challenge, uh, one that I'm prepared for. And I know I was laughing in our interview the other day that I was reading my school paper from 10 years ago and it said, where will you be in 10 years? And it said, a high school basketball coach. And 10 years later, here it is. And just by faith, it worked out that way. But I am very humbled, I'm very excited, and I can't wait for November 2nd to get here to officially get the season underway. Um, it's, like I, said, I know it's a challenge, but a lot of things that I believe in, um, a lot of things I was taught by my parents, um, you mentioned my coach from high school, that they've instilled in me, I'm looking forward to instilling those into the basketball program. Things like discipline, um, an emphasis on academics, um, our image in the community, and just program building in general, four things that I want our program to be based on. I call them my four cornerstones. That I feel like if I focus on those, we'll have success in the years to come. And you know, like I said the challenge and opportunity are very exciting for me and looking forward to November 2nd. And so. yeah, I want to introduce his parents. His parents are with them, Nancy and Frank. Who's that guy behind? The <laughs> beat reporter for the boardman. <laughs> your staff is what yeah. Yeah. He's already uh, doing a good job stealing coaches from other staff. So <laughs> he stole coaches that's away from the freshman basketball staff. Now, I don't know why that would upset me, not that I have a freshman daughter or anything, but I'm looking forward to my daughter playing for Coach Zett, so we'll have to figure that one out. But I'm glad to see Coach Zett be part of our staff over on the boys' side now. I think that would be a nice addition. A couple, couple questions here, Mr. Birch. Yeah. <laughs> related, related to a Paul Birch. Yes, I, I hear you know him. Uh, there's <laughs> some <strike connection>. one. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta watch you now. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm excited for you as a former basketball player for Boardman. I also had three sons who played, so it's Boardman basketball is very near and dear to my heart, and my family. So, uh, big step for you. Good luck to you. Thank you. You're part of the tradition we're trying to get back to. It, thank you. It's good tradition. Thanks. Good tradition. Good luck to you. Thanks. I thought you were going to ask him some basketball. Any thoughts? Strategies. You're going to try and get back to the tradition of 
skinny legs, <laughs> big black glasses, <laughs> and, short shorts, and short yeah, shorts. short shorts, and a guy that stands there and can just kind of lob it in from all you over. Can't jump. Wow. I would say I would say five of those guys. <laughs> <laughs> just remember, Fred Davis was not a household name either, but look at him now. Took money. You had to pay people off. So. <laughs> Thank you, Phil, Patrick. Good luck to you. Really. Thank you. Appreciate you being here, Patrick. Thank Thank Mrs. Birch, Alyssa, Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if, you know what? Can you guys stick for a few minutes? The meeting's going to be, I think, fairly short. Yes. I'd like to say hello to everybody. If that's yeah, I'd like to talk so. to you afterwards. I think Jim's open if you want to do some one on one. I can't go to the first one. We think Scott is. <laughs> uh, Mr. Santilli, moving on. First item I have, there's a total of six donations. The first is to Market Street School. School supplies valued at $1,088.10 don donated to Mrs. Janet Seifert, second grade teacher. Supplies were donated from Office Max as part of the Adopt a Classroom Make a Better Day program. Also to Market Street, $100 from Sharon Uhas of Youngstown Tail Waggers 4-H Dog Club. This donation will be used to create a class of sending me fourth grade students to pitch. Also, Market Street School, $128 from David Nickelbacher Evangel Baptist Church. The donation will be deposited in the Pupil Support Fund and used to purchase 32 headphones for needy students. Stadium Drive, $351.24 from Target Tape Charge. This will go into the Pupil Support Fund. Also, Stadium Drive, $200 from, Mr. from Dr. James Chingelis to purchase materials from the science lab. Into Bourbon High School, a new scoreboard for the softball field at the high school to be installed by Bob Jones of Youngstown Propane. The cost of the scoreboard is $3,500, and these are for your approval. A motion, please. So moved. John? Second? Second. Mark? Thank you. Questions? Anything for Rich? Rich. Mrs. Pomo? Aye. Mr. Amstutz? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mr. Folks? Aye. Mr. Landers? Aye. Donations have been approved and we thank those individuals. <coughs> Next item is workers' compensation and employment claims. It's recommended the board enter into a one year agreement with Tartan Benefit Services Limited, effective October 10, 2012. Tartan Benefit Services will provide assistance. Workers' compensation claims at a cost of $7,350 and unemployment claims at a cost of $750. And these are the same uh, fees that we had paid last year. And this is for your approval. A motion, please. So moved. Nick? Second. Second. Kevin, thanks. Questions? Rich, is that the same firm or a different firm? Same. Same. We've used them. Uh, I want to say five years since we've gone to the retro plan. They've been very, very helpful along with the uh, our MCO and the uh, business consultant from the bureau. We've probably saved uh, in excess of nine hundred thousand dollars in uh, workers' comp premiums, and uh, they are greatly uh, appreciated. We meet one, once a month, so we're getting our our money's worth. Rich. Mr. Amstutz? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mr. Folks? Aye. Mr. Landers? Aye. Mrs. Pomo? Aye. All right. The um, agreement with the Department of Benefit Services has been approved. Mr. Wazir? One item under superintendent's business, and that is the educational ideologist agreement with Jumpstown City Schools. That is amended. You had to approve that previously, and <coughs> it is amended as appears in attachment 7. And I ask for your approval of that uh, amended agreement with Jamestown City Schools to provide speech and hearing services to a child uh, currently attending uh, school out of district who we are hopefully uh, going to welcome back to board in January. Motion, please. So moved. <coughs> John, second? Second. Yeah, thank you. Questions? Um, what's the amendment, Frank? Uh, it appears there on the last page of the agreement. I take that back. It doesn't appear. I thought it. Just bold on 
page 2? No, Nancy said it was. Oh, yeah. Okay, there it is. Item 6 and 7. Thank you. On the second page of the agreement. Since the student may come back in January, this, this is my full school year agreement. It would be for the remainder of this school year. It's uh, Youngstown Speech and Hearing, or whatever they refer to themselves, they weren't able to provide the services necessary, and Ron DeBuey, the same thing. Uh, these services, uh, Youngstown City, so it's kind of a shared services type uh, deal, and that's what they're all talking about, shared services these days. Okay. Thank you. Rich? Mr. Davis? Aye. Mr. Foltz? Aye. Mr. Landers? Aye. Mrs. Palmer? Aye. Mr. Aramstead? Aye. Field trips, uh, note the field trips there. Um, second half of the year, we have uh, orchestra uh, going to state contests and orchestra going to Toronto. And then the first half of the year, we have a debate that uh, took place already. And uh, <coughs> Traveling to Chicago in November and orchestra trip this week, 25th, 26th. I think John's going to be there. They're going to Severance, am I correct? Yep. And then under the events, I'd, I'd asked you also uh, about the Saturdays in concert, if you can make it. Uh, 7 o'clock, Bourbon High School, Cupcake Judging, 5.30. Let me know if you're available. And the play coming up. Conference is coming up, and back to you. Um, reports, uh, Mr. Landers. Uh, I guess the first part is the for the delegate assembly at Capitol Conference. I went through the stuff. It's pretty straightforward. Nothing or shattering in terms of the amendments that we're voting on. So and then, uh, uh, also on the 29th, similar to the event that we had held, uh, I want to say May 7th. If my memory officers may correct me. So uh, the. League of Women Voters is hosting another forum on uh, how does school choice uh, impact community taxpayers, and it's going to be on Monday the 29th uh, at 6:30 at Austin Town Middle School cafeteria. So, um, and we have you know our districts involved: Austin Town, Canfield, uh, Poland, Jackson, Milton, and South Wing. So, just encourage people to attend if they're interested, and to, uh, we'll try to get the word out in the community. So. That's it. Okay. Thanks, John. Mr. Lazari. Number of board policies for a first read. Those were sent to you uh, via email. And those policies are the suggestions were made by OSBA in response to some changes in the law. For example, they reflect changes in the third grade guarantee. They be, they, uh, there's a, a new fraud reporting mandate of all new employees have to sign off to report fraud that they feel is taking place within the district. One of the policies talks about that. Um, Senate Bill 316 and House Bill 153 changes uh, are reflected in two policies. Bring your own device policy, something that the high school started this year as a pilot with a board policy on that. And that kind of sums up probably about a dozen policies in all of it. Uh, oh, and also uh, bullying is uh, due to the Jessica Logan Act. There are some changes in the board policy on uh, uh, bullying and hazing. If you have specific questions, I can answer those. Uh, next time around, if you want to shoot an email, there's nothing major other than the bring your own device that uh, they're working with at the high school right now. Could we get a quick comment from Tim on how that's working? Uh, absolutely. He's got his own device we're, with him right now. We were now. talking about it today. As a matter of fact. How is our new policy working? Trouble? Uh, I have to say it has actually uh, changed the culture. It's changed the atmosphere of the school for the good. Okay. Um, it's just uh, the, the kids are more relaxed. It, it, it doesn't feel like you're fighting the kids. You know, there's the... Uh, I was on lunch duty last year, and you could look around, and at any given time, I could, I could pick out 40 kids texting, and other ones are known. <laughs> other girls in the first, like, 
you know, it's, it, I'm not saying there was a tension, but it was just, it was always like they were hiding something. And I just, I don't know, there's, there's, there's less of a problem now in the classroom because kids know there's an appropriate time to pull their phone. I mean, it's not perfect, um, but I, I think that the kids have embraced it, most of our staff have, and now they're starting to search ways to how to implement instruction. Some jumped on it, they, they've been waiting for some reason, <coughs> some are still learning, some still need some professional development, but uh, I think it has, a, uh, has had a tremendous impact on the school, um, and like I said, for the good. Yeah, there's going to be some things, you know, we're all going to have to grow together on it, but uh, I don't know, it's, it's a lot more relaxed atmosphere. It, it really is because of that. Part of our problem at the high school in all buildings in Boardman is the, the Wi-Fi wi -Fi connectivity. Yeah. Uh, our Wi-Fi system is uh, rather aged at this point, probably about six years old. The high school, uh, probably more than that, I bet you, you have seven, seven almost eight now. And uh, it's, it's an old B network, you know. Uh, the, the, the B so it gets overloaded. Or well, we're, we have it locked down. Okay, <laughs> yeah, we, we have it locked down. It, it, it's password encoded, um, but you can walk into any class and just say, "How many kids know the password?" Yeah. And <laughs> at least half to two thirds do. But we're trying to find out is that possible. We're, we're having some problems with our, our connection. We're trying to find out if uh, there's an increased load because the kids more devices in the, in the building, or it's just old. Uh, actually, we're in the process right now of trying to reset the passwords. I know that'll probably last about three days, um, <laughs> just to see if you know, things things run smoothly. When, when, when you do a full rollout of a BYOD device policy, um, you're supposed to open up your, your Wi-Fi access to the kids to fully implement it. And we told them we, we, we got to wait and see because yeah, ours is a little bit older. Uh, and we weren't sure where we were going, if we were doing upgrades or not. Uh, but we told them we'd like to do it, but we got to make sure it doesn't impact our teachers' use of it, because that would impact the structure. And that's the primary concern for the Wi-Fi. So. See, the, the newer Wi-Fi systems, you can have a managed system where uh, you can make sure that there's a, there's a certain band or a certain number of um, available space for students and a separate for, for teachers, and you can control them. I'm impressed. <laughs> Why do One. they need to use our Wi-Fi? I mean, my cell phone, you just run it on 4G. I don't, I just turn the Wi-Fi off. Oh, I mean, not every kid, kid has a smartphone, first of all. Oh, no, you'd be surprised how many kids have iPods, you know, which is really, it's, it's, it's the iPhone without, without the phone piece in it. And uh, if, they, if they don't have Wi-Fi access, they really can't use it uh, for instructional purposes, unless they have a, the, the right app. Um, so The other good thing is on the 3G, you can't control what's coming in, but on Wi-Fi, we can control right. what we want to. Right. Uh, we'd have our, we'd have our, our filters on it. You know, the, the, the yeah. Nooks, the Kindles, an iPad, not all those have come, not everyone's buying those with the, uh, the, the cellular service. Most of those are just Wi-Fi. So for the kids really to use them, you know, we like to start small, maybe open up, uh, you know, have, you know, like they could do at Starbucks or have the library. The, uh, a hot spot. Maybe have the cafeteria be a hot spot. Slowly open up into so we can make sure we can handle the capacity of the kids using it. So we can go through a full implementation or invest back into some of the access points they were and replace those. I mean, I think it's a really creative idea, and I'm really interested to see how it evolves. And maybe like around the start of school next year, that could be kind of one of the areas we target for professional development. So, yeah. Yeah, I they have some teachers that are wrong with it. You know. Uh, I think uh, Coach Zett, you, you're using the polling. The polling. There's, uh, you know, the turning technologies using mm -hmm. response systems. Yeah. Well, there's a, a website called Polling Everywhere that a teacher can sign up for. It's free, and they can do that exact same thing mm -hmm. if a kid just has a cell phone. They don't have to be a smartphone. They just have to be able to text. Yeah. They, they, you know, Coach Zett, <coughs> you put questions up and say, okay, uh, and you're assigned a number. Text one if you think it's there. You know, text two if you think it's B. I'm oversimplifying it, but. I know they're using their class. Instead of me going out and buying a fifteen hundred dollars system from Turning Technologies, the kids already have that technology, and not every teacher can have that free. Um, and we have uh, there's a, another web service called Remind One Hundred One, which uh, uh, teachers can use to uh, have their kids enroll onto a, a distribution list, and they can send reminders out to their their entire all their classes. Hey, don't forget big project tomorrow. And it goes through uh, kind of a neutral number. Kids can't text back. So, right. Uh, but it, it's a true reminder system. All our counselors are given out to their, uh, you know, to their uh, 
different students, especially like the seniors and juniors, saying, hey, don't forget this SAT, or hey, call a scholarship for this is due, so they can send reminders out. Now, those are two technologies that our teachers have jumped on. Um, that makes it, it's just part of that. It's, Thanks. Yeah, we weren't real sure. I mean, like, we thought it would be good, but it's just, it's just you know, it took a little while to get used to. You know, kids take kids with some headphones in and stuff, but it's you know, Have really you had good. to collect many devices and hand them back at the end of the day? It, that, that has become rare now. I mean, it still happens a little bit, yeah. but most kids know, like, hey, I, I can wait until the period's over and I can check it, you know, check the test. Good. Thanks. Anything else? A uh, motion to go in executive session for employment of personnel. So moved. John, second. Second. Kim. Rich. Mr. Folks. Aye. Mr. Landers. Aye. Mrs. Palmer. Aye. Mr. Ramsdale. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Okay. Executive session approved. Come on up there, Mr. Birch. Mr. Birch. Good luck. Thank you. Uh, challenging. I'm going to